Libre. Oh, see, yeah. Es Libre. Yeah. Um, well, Lonely Hearts Club came from uh, something that happened in my life, which was I had a friend who we all have this friend who stops hanging out with her friends when she gets a boyfriend. And we were out on a Saturday night and I was like, you know what, why am I spending time with her when I have all these amazing single girlfriends? We spent every Saturday night, like every Saturday night together. And then I thought that would be a really good idea for a book because we've all experienced that. Um, we've all experienced heartbreak and then wanting to just give up on love altogether. Um, it's a very immediate reaction, but it's not something that, you know, we should all do for the rest of our lives. Do you want to, and then yeah. I can continue. Esto es un poco como, para comentarles que esta historia surge a partir de una experiencia propia. Porque cuando yo era chica también, pues ocurrió lo mismo. Éramos un grupo de amigas y de repente una de ellas, pues simplemente tiene novio y se afecta la vida con las amigas. Los, los sábados en la tarde siempre nos veíamos, y pasábamos tiempo juntas, pero ahora ella está ocupada con su madre. Entonces, eso de alguna manera me alteraba, pensando, bueno, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué tiene que cambiar esto? ¿Por qué tenemos que enfocarnos en la relación con los novios y dejar a un lado a las amigas? Y fue como la, lo que inició, lo, lo que da inicio a esta historia justamente. But then I thought, you know, putting myself in the girl's shoes, like I have more than once been like, boys are dumb, I'm done. Um, but then, you know, even my brother, when he read it, he's like, really, really? Because the book's a little mean at guys, but I needed her to realize that friends are really important and they're what can get you through because I feel that if you are comfortable with yourself and you have a really great group of friends, you can uh, get through anything. But I think before you can be in love with someone, you have to love yourself. So that's why I have Penny Lane Bloom be really strong and confident because I feel like that's what you need to do when you're able to give yourself to someone. Y por otro lado, bueno, todos hemos experimentado a lo mejor que nos rompen el corazón y eso nos mueve un poco sobre cuál va a ser nuestro objetivo en la vida, continuar en la búsqueda de una pareja o probablemente regresar a tus amigos. Yo lo que sí les puedo decir es que los amigos se aceptan como eres, pase lo que pase, y que esos verdaderos amigos no debemos de dejarlos por una u otra situación. Incluso con el caso de mi hermano, pues creo que, que lo hemos platicado y así es, los chicos piensan un poco distinto, pero los amigos siempre van a estar ahí. Y para mí, por eso es que pongo a, en la historia a Penny Lane como una chica tan fuerte y tan centrada, que a pesar de que le pasan muchas cosas con, el, con la situación del novio y las amigas, sabe valorar que tiene cosas buenas en la vida. How is it that if Penny Lane was so sure that she didn't want to have anything to do with boys after what happened with Nate? Uh, how is it that out of the blue she started feeling so strongly that love for Ryan? Yeah, it's it's funny because I needed her to just be like just so disgusted at men and it's slow, gradual through it, you know, because he's always been a good guy, but he's never been someone she ever considered to be a boyfriend because he was with someone and you know there's there's something very funny that's said in the book that once someone said to me once about how I'm always like really great friends with like gay guys or my friends husbands and and one of my friends like yes because you're not going to be hurt by that because there's no there's no way that you know you're going to be like your heart broken and that's how Penny saw Ryan and then when he finally you know, was single and she kind of realized that he's the kind of person that she would want to be with. Um, yeah, she's a little stubborn about it. I mean, that's something about Penny is, you know, she realized she's been saying all, all these things to the club and then realizing that the guy, the perfect guy who would be worth everything has been there all along, basically. So, you know, she's a little stubborn. Bueno, pues sí, Penny Lane, para alguna manera, eh, pasa por este proceso. Primero la, la exagera un poco el hecho de que no quería nada que ver con los hombres. Y así es como arranca el, el club de los corazones solitarios. Pero después, poco a poco, puedo, pensando en cómo es que ella se empieza a relacionar con Ryan, simplemente lo ve como alguien que está ahí, que tiene una relación con alguien más y que no es candidato. Y creo que se da muchas veces en ocasiones con las chicas que pasa lo mismo. Con él no puede ser o porque probablemente sea gay o porque tiene otra esposa o por algo más. Entonces te empiezas a, a comportar con él y a tener una relación de lo más natural, sin ninguna expectativa de algo más. Y es así como yo creo que se va dando esto con, entre ellos hasta que en algún punto se da cuenta, ya que él, él está soltero, de que pues, realmente él tiene todas las características que él quisiera de un hombre. Y es un poco necia, sí, es lo que yo podría resumir. Es un poco necia, pero al final se da cuenta de que él tiene todo para ser su hombre. 
Now, without giving any more details, any further details, because we want people to read your tales. Yes. Oh gosh, um, I've been giving things away. <laughs> uh, do you think that your book is a way of self-discovery? I mean, might be like a means to discover your wild self and probably getting to uh, establish priorities in one's life and seeing that things may go on and that people might be good or bad and probably having good relationships and bad relationships, but finally you need to find your way to happiness. Do you consider that? I guess I've heard from a lot of readers, a lot of Mexican readers, that they have either broken up with boyfriends who have been abusive, which I'm always just, you know, so amazed that they would have the strength to do that um, because of my book. Um, but I do, I, I mean, most of my readers have said they found confidence in themselves reading this book, that Penny is someone they look up to, and that their friends, I mean, I've heard from a lot of people who have have formed their own Lonely Hearts Club. And it just means a lot that, you know, I wrote this for myself and as the author, I have at times found strength in the character I created. I once was like crying about a boy and I was like, Penny Lane would be so upset at me right now. <laughs> what am I doing? You're gonna be fine. Um, yeah, so I mean, I have also found strength, which is silly, but I think um, from what I've heard from readers, they have found that, which makes me so amazed and grateful. To bueno, sí, en realidad yo creo que eh, algunos son lectores mexicanos incluso me han escrito y me han comentado sobre algunas relaciones cuando simplemente eh, dejaron de tener una relación porque había diferencias o porque incluso ha habido abusos y eso me comentan que les ha hecho pues sentirse bien a leer el libro y me, me ha sorprendido mucho porque yo creo que tienes que ser muy muy valiente para poder enfrentar una situación así. Sin embargo, me han comentado que al leer el libro han encontrado una fuente de confianza y un poco lo que tú decías, ese camino de autodescubrimiento. Me parece que es, uh, el personaje de Penny Lane es alguien a quien llegan a admirar, sobre todo por su fortaleza. ¿Y qué más te puedo decir? Bueno, incluso han llegado a formar algunos pequeños clubes de corazones solitarios a partir de estos problemas con las, con las parejas. Y para mí me parece que la fortaleza de Penny Lane es algo característico y que... En mi caso, personalmente, me ha ayudado a enfrentar situaciones como las de tener problemas con una pareja en las que yo digo, ay, no, pero ¿por qué? ¿Por qué estoy llorando? ¿Qué diría Penny Lane si estuviera aquí? Y eso me da mucha satisfacción de que lo juro que es mejor. ¿Por qué? Penny, I'm like kind of alter ego of yourself. I mean, because you talk about something that reminds you of your adolescence or of your youth. So, uh, I don't know, does that have to be with your personality or is this that you can find a little bit of Elizabeth in the adulthood here in this book as well? Yeah, this is the first book I ever wrote, so um, Penny is very much me in a lot of ways because she's the first character I created. Um, her best friend Tracy has my dry sense of humor, um, but I think, but there are times I wish I was more like Penny because she's a lot stronger than me, but yeah, there are a lot. In every story in the book about a breakup, <laughs> I had a Nate, um, but also uh, every story is either from me or my friends. <laughs> bueno, sí, este fue el primer libro que yo uh, alguna vez escribí, entonces tengo de, debo de aceptar que el personaje de Penny Lane tiene mucho de mí. Y incluso también Tracy un poco, es como el complemento, tiene mucho sentido del, del humor, pero me gustaría que fuera un poco más parecida a Penny Lane, porque es mucho, mucho más fuerte. Pero sí, no puedo negar que tiene mucho de mí y que esto es parte de, de cómo se han dado las cosas en el libro. <laughs> so, in your books, you say, you mentioned uh, that you wanted to, to make all this story, you wanted to get at some time of your life to get away from them. Yeah. I mean, that you didn't believe in them. But later on, you came up and you just started getting along with them. So, why was that? I mean, why did you decide at one point of your life to simply have nothing to do with them? You know what's funny? I'm, I'm currently on a break now. <laughs> uh, dating in New York City is, is, is muy mal. I think because very much like Penny, when you've been in a relationship and then it ends, you just, you, you, don't, you hate how you feel. You don't want it to ever happen again. Um, so right right now, I, I dated a lot like two years ago, dating, dating, a guy I used to date came back in my life, dating, 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 and it just was like, just not good. 
and I thought, you know what, I got a lot of books to write. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. I'm just not like right now searching, um, but I will. I told myself January, year of, year of Elizabeth dating again, but um, I think sometimes it's good if you shouldn't do anything that doesn't make you feel good about yourself. And so for me, going on all these dates, going online, getting rejected, I just was like, I, I just can't. But I have faith I'm gonna meet someone someday. I'm not worried about that. I, but you know, in order to do that, I do have to put myself out there, so yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like whatever it is, dating or being friends with someone, if something doesn't make you feel good, you should stop doing it or take a break from it, yeah. Bueno, yo, me, lo que yo creo que lo que te molesta cuando terminas con una relación en realidad lo que te pega es cómo te sientes tú contigo misma después de que has pasado por algo así. Dices, ¿cómo es posible que pase esto? ¿Por qué me siento tan mal? Y por eso, pues, a lo mejor una situación extrema es decir, ya no lo voy a hacer de nuevo, ya no voy a buscar una relación. Pero en realidad, pues, bueno, no es que me haya yo cerrado en eso. Dos, eh, tengo, de hecho, dos años estuve saliendo en citas diferentes y, bueno, simplemente de repente sale, funciona, de repente no, y en este caso pues hubo problemas y decidí ya, no quiero sentirme así, no quiero tener problemas, mejor voy a dedicarme a escribir. Y tengo mucho que hacer, entonces tengo que escribir, pero no por eso dejo de salir, de, de platicar con gente, de darme oportunidades, creo que es muy importante sentirse bien, antes que nada hacer cosas que te hagan sentir bien, ya sea pues, con una cita o probablemente teniendo amistades únicamente, pero creo que sí, tengo fe todavía de poder encontrar una pareja. Bueno, ¿cómo te sientes con el éxito? ¿Cómo te sentiste con el éxito? Sorry. Austin, I was like, wait a second. Sorry, sorry. I thought for a second, like, I understand Spanish, so I'm right now. Excuse me, excuse me. How do you feel with the success you've had in Mexico? Because, uh, let me tell you, thank you, because I identify myself with your oh, groups. And I really like that, of having that idea of having this um, agreement with you, I think. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say thank you and to ask about how, how you feel with this success because and how you think that, how do you think about having a broken heart might change? How is it possible that when you have a broken heart, you can really change this into a new heart and have a new sturdy heart that might resist any heart? Yes, you know, I love my Mexican readers so much. Uh, they were one of the first group that I kept hearing from a lot. And it always just excited me. I'm like, I have readers in Mexico? What? And then when I came here last year, um, I just was, I kind of had to afterwards just sit in my hotel room and be like, did that just happen? It was amazing. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I'm living proof. I've had my heart broken a couple of times and I'm, I'm good. Like, I, I swear, I don't know. Uh, um, and I've always gotten by and, and it's gotten healed by just, you know, first of all, time is a really big thing, just letting distance happen. And you always kind of get clarity when you've been away from a situation for a while that you realize things weren't actually as good as you make it up in your head. Um, I also rely on music a lot. Um, I always have like songs that I dance around to. Taylor Swift's We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together is one of <laughs> like ever. Um, and, and yeah, and, but most of all, like just rely on my friends, like, you know, just going out and hanging out and knowing that you are going to be okay because it wasn't meant to be that, you know? Um, the person who you're meant to be isn't going to break your heart. So, goodbye. We'll get through, we'll get through it. We'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, pues para mí, para mí ha sido un un deleite tener tantos seguidores en México, fueron de hecho los primeros grupos que comenzaron a contactarme en las redes y era algo fabuloso, cuando estuve aquí el año pasado me di cuenta de tanta gente que ya había leído mis libros y fue algo muy muy reconfortante, pero bueno cuando tienes problemas y si te se rompe tu corazón pues simplemente creo que hay que sentirlo, sentirlo bien y después darle tiempo a curar para mí cuestiones o elementos muy importantes para esto primero que nada es el tiempo, como para darte tu tiempo, tener claridad y poder distinguir cuáles son las cosas buenas que te crearon esta relación y lo malo dejarlo ir. Y también confío mucho en la parte de la música, aunque Taylor Swift diga que probablemente nunca, nunca, nunca más vas a poder volver a la Nunca. Hora. Nunca. <risa> <risa> nunca digas nunca. Y no te pierdas la oportunidad de, si vuelves a encontrar a una persona, pues simplemente volver a pensar en puede darse el amor. Y de, siempre existe esa posibilidad de, buscando a alguien, encontrar a alguien para ti. Ok. Así que no te preocupes, vas a salir. What's coming now for you in your career? A new novel like this one to make us cry and feel for a while? <laughs> I, yes, yes. See. See. Um, so I have two books, dos libros. <laughs> See, this okay. is what I just like, what the words I know. No. Yeah, yeah. I have two books that'll come out in Mexico. We're not sure. It'll probably be not for a year. Um, 
I have a book for younger readers, um, 8 to 12, um, called The Great Shelby Holmes. It's a detective series um, based on Sherlock Holmes where the detective is a girl. But my next young adult book um, in the U.S.